if you're thinking about having a snack, maybe you're going to choose between licorice and an orange. And you look at those and you go, hmm, this one's considered empty calories. Yet we've looked at the carbohydrate lesson and we know that the carbohydrate in them is not that different. Calorie-wise, they're the same, and when they get into the body, they act fairly similar. And yet this is considered empty calories. So what is it empty of? And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next few lessons. It's empty of those vitamins and minerals. The last few lessons, we've looked at the macronutrients, the carbohydrate, the lipids, and the proteins. In the next few lessons, we're going to look at the micronutrients, those nutrients that we need very little amount every day, just milligrams and micrograms every day. There will be two lessons on vitamins and two on minerals, and this uh, introduction is for the two lessons on vitamins. As you review this class, we have to think broadly about what are vitamins. And there are actually thousands and thousands of molecules that your body uses and produces every day. But there are 13 of them that the body uses that it can't produce. And those 13 molecules are our vitamins. Um, they have common elements, not just um, vitamin C we think about in oranges, but all vitamins have common elements. All vitamins are essential. They have unique chemical structures. And so one cannot replace the other. Thiamine cannot replace riboflavin. We don't get any energy, so none of these vitamins have calories. They have chemical energy to keep the molecule together, but we don't have the uh, biochemical mechanisms to rip it apart, so we don't get any energy or calories from vitamins we consume. All vitamins are molecules, not atoms, and because of that, sometimes they have multiple chemical structures. And finally, they are all organic because they contain carbon, so that's the definition of organic. As we start looking at the, the lessons on vitamins, we'll first divide them into the two major ca uh, categories of water soluble and fat solubles. And as you look at them, we'll find out that they kind of have unique characteristics depending upon that one factor. And they have different ways we absorb them, different ways the body transports them, different ways that we store them. We have fat on the body so we can store fat soluble, but we can excrete fat soluble because we have no mechanism. As opposed to water soluble, we can excrete them in our urine. And finally, we'll look at the likelihood of them being toxic or more likely to be deficient. Then with the two lessons, the first lesson we'll be looking at the water-soluble vitamins, the second one on the fat-soluble, we'll go through each one of the vitamins. We'll look at the name of the vitamin, food sources, its general functions, deficiency symptoms, toxicity, whether it's likely to be toxic, and then what are some symptoms, and anything unique about each vitamin. These can be rather confusing, similar names, similar function, but all of them unique. So I have devised a chart that can help you go through the material that's on the course webpage. I highly encourage you to look at that. But vitamins and minerals, they make our foods non-empty calories.